For the first question, we are asked to propose a mechanism for this transformation. Looking at the starting materials and product, it looks like we've got two methyl groups on a carbon. We did a methyl shift here where now we've got methyls, carbons, one away from the other, and we've added HBr. We had an alkene here. We did an addition of hydrobromic acid to the alkene. So for this, we're going to do our proton transfer where our electrons in our alkene are going to attack the hydrogen and the bromine will leave to get us to our intermediate. We could put the hydrogen here to put the plus charge there, or we could put the hydrogen here to put the plus charge there. Based on the fact that we're doing a 1-2 methyl shift, I think the plus charge needs to be there so we can stabilize that secondary carbocation to make it tertiary. So I'm going to put the hydrogen on this carbon here. So drawing my cyclohexane ring, which now is a cyclohexane ring because we don't have the alkene, we have a positive charge there and two methyl groups there. And now this carbon right here has the hydrogen. So we had one hydrogen there. Now we have two hydrogens there. Now that we have our carbocation intermediate, we can do a one, two methyl shift to get us to our next intermediate. Now we have two methyl groups and we have Br minus, which can do our nucleophilic attack on that carbon to get us to our final product. For the next question, we're asked to draw the major stereospecific products for five of the reactions. Cross out the one you don't answer. I'll go ahead and answer all of them. So for this, we're going to stop at our enol. So specifically on this carbon here, we're going to add an alcohol. So for this reaction, the intermediate is an alkene with an alcohol functional group. And we still have the rest of our carbon chain. So for our sp3 hybridized carbons, we have one, two, three, and I have one, two, three right there. We had an alcohol functional group. Now our enol is going to readily do a tautomerization reaction, and that will be transformed into a ketone on the more substituted carbon. So that is the product for this one. Um, for this, we're adding hydrochloric acid, so we're going to do a proton transfer. there to get us a carbocation intermediate. We'll do a 1-2 hydride shift, so that hydrogen is going to jump over to form the more stable carbocation intermediate, which is that carbon there. And now we can use our chlorine to either attack from the front on this carbon or attack from the back so both products will be formed and that gets us to now we have a methyl group for this one I'll put it in the back and put chlorine in the front and we have our ethyl group plus the enantiomer of that which is chlorine in the back and the methyl group in the front and methyl group there. So those are the two major products for that reaction. For here we have an acid catalyst and we have water so we're going to add an alcohol functional group to our alkene. So we no longer have the double bond, now we have a methyl group and we have an alcohol functional group, OH and the rest of our carbon chain and then we also have the enantiomer for that. So there is our ethyl group, and we have our OH now on a dash, methyl group on a wedge, and our propyl group there. If we add hydrochloric acid in excess, we're going to get to an intermediate where we have our alkene with chlorine there and we have three carbons left in our chain. Another equivalent of hydrochloric acid is going to give us 
two chlorines there. We don't have a stereocenter on this compound because we have two chlorines attached to that one carbon. Um, if we use our reducing agent with palladium, then we are going to fully reduce this from an alkene to an alkane. So we've got one, two, three, four, five carbons. So we go from two pentene to pentane is our product. And here, if we have our reducing agent, our H2 with Lindlar's catalyst, then we are going to form a cis alkene. So from that carbon there, we have an alkene now, which is cis, which means that methyl group goes there. Um, and that carbon that I just drew is attached to two more carbons. So one, two, so one, two, three carbons, one, two, three carbons, our cis alkene, and then one terminal methyl group coming from that. And we have a cis alkene because our two hydrogens are on the same side and our carbons are on the same side of the alkene.